But the Atlantic has beat you to it. A fast asleep Atlantic Basin on this September 10th. Mm -hmm. The 10th is a significant day of the season because it's when, as we've shown you this graphic a lot, this is when we reach the summit or the peak. Records tell us today is when we have the highest chance of seeing activity somewhere in the Atlantic Basin. History doesn't always repeat itself. Mm -mm. Proof is in the pudding, so to speak. Activity over the next seven days looks unlikely as the National Hurricane Center has a zero, well, zero areas, I should say, to watch in the basin. So it is oddly quiet for the peak of the hurricane season. While no surprise here is yeah. all week we've been tracking this, mm -hmm. September 10th, very important. Here's another stat for you. The National Hurricane mm -hmm. Center, they began issuing tropical weather outlooks back in 2009. So over the 17 years that these outlooks have been issued, this is the first September 10th where there's neither a named storm or an area to watch in the entire basin. It's a lot of data to consume, but you see how it's played out over these past several years. 2009, and then you run all the way through the timeline to 2004 when, yeah, just last season, we did have a couple of things to watch yeah. on this date. Let's go ahead and bring in Fox Weather Specialist Brian Norcross. Brian joining us. And one of the big questions as we kick off this day, Brian, is, well, then, what's happening? <laughs> Yeah, what's happening? That's a really good question. It is interesting. You know, if you go back to, to 1950 or so, which is uh, we use that date a lot because that's when we feel like we <clears throat> have have an understanding of what storms were going on because there was reconnaissance and so forth going on with airplanes uh, since that time. There's only one year that we haven't had a uh, storm during this period from the end of August to now. That was 1992, and that was the weeks after Hurricane Andrew. We always thought that was just Mother Nature giving us a break in South Florida because uh, we had so much to do after that storm. But anyway, that was an unusual year for that reason. So there's the peak, 57% of activity remaining, activity being any kind of named storm uh, going on. So more than half of the season in terms of named storms is yet to come, but not in terms of the amount of energy in the storms. The storms in October tend to be on the weaker side side, but still, as we saw last year with Hurricane Milton, they can certainly be uh, very, very strong. All right, so uh, what's going on with the season? Well, we've had six named storms so far. On average, we would have eight by now. Hurricanes, we've had one on average three, and we have had one a Category 3 and above hurricane, Aaron, of course, uh, but, and that's what we would normally have by this time of year. The uh, Category 3 and above come a little bit later here in September. And in terms of tropical energy, which you might hear referred to as ACE, accumulated cyclone energy in the Atlantic. Well, uh, we are at 40 and the normal is 58. So about two thirds of uh, normal. And this is a lot like what was going on last year. If you remember, we were uh, we had no tropical development expected uh, last year either. Uh, just before this, right? We got Francine just about this time uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. But we went through this big old long period last year, and it's starting to get a little bit suspicious, to tell you the truth. Right now, we have high pressure out over the Atlantic, and it's unusually strong. So what does that mean? The flow is like that. So that means on this side here, it's pushing dry air from the north down to the south, also pushing it over the western parts of Africa, which seems to be sort of, uh, subduing the, the tropical disturbances coming off of Africa a bit. So what's causing that is a different uh, question, but that is the fact of what we're looking at uh, right now. And then we have a couple other things. If this high pressure flow is coming this way, uh, maybe that's what's responsible for keeping the Saharan dust going. Now, the amount of Saharan dust this year has not been excessive, but it has been going longer into the year. It's just the thickness of it hasn't been so dramatic because the thickness of it has to do with the tropical disturbances over Africa stirring it up. So, uh, but it is still going, as you can see. And then there's one more factor down there. That's called this ITCZ. This is the convergence between the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. And so, so this is all hostile for storms here. This is hostile for storms here. So you see there's a little corridor in here that something coming off of Africa 
effort could conceivably uh, make it through, and we thought that 91L was going to do that. But then it got too far south, and it got down in here, and that was that. So uh, we just have hostile conditions in the eastern Atlantic, and this part of the hurricane season is the eastern Atlantic part of the hurricane season. If you remember last year, that wasn't the big deal part. The big deal part was the western part of the Atlantic, the Gulf and the Caribbean, and that may turn out to be the situation this year. Of course, there's no way to know that for sure. So what's going to happen with the high pressure? Watch as it goes a little bit to the east and weakens with time. So this is the going through, uh, this is going up to uh, next Saturday, next week. Now, when we look at the computer uh, forecast for the moisture you can see everything's strung out here look at the browns here this is all dry air up in here but we do have this moisture area here now watch as we go through time for the next week here what you're going to see is that we do get these disturbances there's kind of three of them coming along here over the next week none of them get organized lots of dry air around them slightly hostile conditions and when we look at our uh, tropical threat graphic. So here we are today. This is where you look at the day up here. Now watch as we go through time. You're going to see one come off. See it come off there? And then here comes another one that looks stronger uh, next week. So we'll see if something develops in here. The thing is, remember, the high shifted over. So that would tend to make the storm track up uh, like this. So, okay, one more thing to mention here, and that is that on this date, 65 years ago, Hurricane Donna just smashed the Middle Keys and then was moving up through Florida. It was a giant storm. It ended up being the size of the entire Florida Peninsula, and it's the only storm in the record book to affect every state along the eastern seaboard from Miami to Maine, they say. That was Hurricane Donna 65 years ago today made its landfall in the Florida Keys. Guys? Yeah, hard to, uh, hard to forget about that one. Uh, Brian, as you were talking, saying that this time of year, even with what we had last year, is um, almost suspicious. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but at what point do we look at this peak time of hurricane season and and note a, tr a trend. It's only been a couple of years, but it is notable. I mean, the past two years having this kind of remarkable lull when it should be peak season. Yeah, it is, uh, Stephen. But the thing is that we look back through the hurricane records and we have a lot of, of variability in these sorts of things. But on the other hand, we, we got to acknowledge the fact that the atmosphere is warmer. We also know now, remember last year we talked a lot about a cap on the atmosphere that was not allowing the thunderstorms to grow. We kind of have that going on this year. We also have a pool of cool water south of Greenland that is a little suspicious that that's due to the uh, uh, icebergs melting in Greenland and making uh, kind of uh, this cool pool up there. Uh, and so that's kind of a semi-permanent thing. So do, do, are these things somehow interconnected with the fact that the climate is different now than it was? It remains to be seen because we also saw it ended last year and things started going again. Um, so it's a little too early to say. We're just going to have to let this play out, let the computer simulations and the research uh, continue and, and see if they can figure it out. Yeah. And the reality is what we got the rest of September and all of October right. and into November. So so there's right. still opportunity for this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. um, OK, well, Brian, hey, you go, yes. right. And before you go, before we release you, um, you do have today at 4 p.m. Eastern that next uh, live Q&A. You've been hosting these throughout the season. Mm -hmm. And all I know is that you have a special guest. Oh, there it is right there. I love a historian. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so Jay Barnes has written books. I mean, he's just the expert on Florida and North Carolina hurricanes. So since we don't have like a lot to talk about here in terms of storms, I thought this would be a great time to uh, look back at some of the, the sort of forgotten but extremely important uh, hurricanes that have happened here uh, in Florida and uh, in the Carolinas and across the hurricane zone. So anyway, uh, Jay Barnes will be on today at 4 o'clock on YouTube, Facebook, uh, TikTok, X, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So live, you can send in questions, and uh, you or, or Jay or I will answer the questions uh, this afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern time on your favorite social media platform. You can learn a lot from these discussions and even just yeah. looking at history and what we've seen, what we've dealt with, and how we've weathered and learned and, and grew and improved our infrastructure. Um, 
looking forward to that. Brian, as always, thank you for hanging out with us here on Weather Command this morning. Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross.